Throughout the continued fumblings of the Biden administration on Afghanistan, which continue to get worse by the day, no one has been able to completely take their mind off of China, and I can see why. Because they have been doing a lot over the past few weeks, both with regard to uh, Afghanistan specifically, uh, threatening to invade Taiwan in the aftermath of such, or uh, <laughs> uh, trying to establish relationships with the Taliban, or on the domestic front. They have done anything but keep quiet, and the latest interpretations of such would be their new policies, which are to ban video games, ban femboys, and ban K-pop, which at least the last two I can't completely disagree with. And these policies have been announced to much fanfare in the West, with many people becoming incredibly concerned with China, and uh, going back to the age-old uh, truism of, well, the Chinese are really focused on schooling, and their schooling is much better than the U.S.'s, <laughs> which... If that was the point of these policies, why would they put in a school tutoring regulation, which is designed to limit the amount of school tutoring, uh, private tutoring, that a child can do after school? It's funny, because these policies, though they initially seemed uh, geared at actually targeting things which are distracting the children from becoming good communists, seem to be more uh, scattershot. They don't seem to have a fully formed narrative there, or at least not one which confers to any of the Western narratives on the Chinese economy and political system more broadly. And what are those narratives? Well, the major narrative would be that the Chinese economy is going to overtake the U.S. at some point in the nebulous future, which I've already covered in some great detail in a video that I did a couple months back, which I suggest you check out, because I'm not going to be completely covering it here. But suffice it to say, the Chinese economy is completely fake, and this has to do with a lot of isolated incidents. It can be evidenced through that, or it can be evidenced through statistical evidence. One of the major ones which I covered in that video was the rampant amount of school cheating that was happening in China. And this has been something that's been going on for decades. Their, school, uh, their schools are not well uh, staffed. They're not well done. Their uh, educational standards are much lower than most any other place, despite pretending to be much higher, which leads to things like, oh, scientists are ignoring lab protocol or having major design problems in certain parts of their, well, I don't know, engineering and architecture and... Uh, civic planning, which has led to a number of problems which I actually cover in that video. And that's on top of a lot of problems which have been also coming up within China. And one of the major ones being an increase in prices and a decrease in stocks. You see, if you read enough of the articles on the video game ban, you'll see uh, aspersions to the drop in, say, Tencent stock or other gaming company stock. But it's worth it to mention that stock, uh, stock prices dropping has been happening kind of all over the place for China. Now, you won't see a lot of articles that completely cover this in their entirety. You kind of have to look them up on an individual basis. But one of the major ones is that Alibaba has dropped 14% in the past quarter. It's kind of crazy how much has kind of been going wrong for China, even throughout Beijing Biden's administration. And you have to kind of ask the question of why aren't many people in the West covering this, including anti-CCP types like, say, me, or, say, the Epoch Times, or those sorts of people, which I'm not trying to cast aspersions at the Epoch Times. You see, uh, they're a great place. They, they do a lot of great articles, and I use them a lot in my videos. But it's worth it to mention that they don't really talk about the weaknesses of the Chinese economy as much as they probably should. And this probably all congeals in one place, that being a Wall Street Journal article, which is the impetus of this entire video, which is incredibly fawning and talks about China's technological revolution and how they're overtaking us in all of these different ways, whether it be their technology, or it be their innovation, or their... Uh, economic growth or manufacturing or all of these things, which kind of reads like a bizarro mirror version of an article from 1953 
talking about the Soviet economy. In, in that article, you don't see as many uh, talks about Soviet technology being much better than the U.S., or you won't see them t uh, talking about the internet age or anything like that. It was the 50s, after all. But you see a lot of the same uh, uh, assertions. You see a lot of the same arguments being made now. And one of the major things that both of these articles seem to have in common uh, is that both the Soviet article and the Wall Street Journal article take every single thing the communist country t says completely seriously. It, this leads to, in the, uh, in the Foreign Times article, a lot, of, a lot of talk about how the Soviet economy is going to overtake the, uh, the U.S. and that communist economies are just more efficient than capitalist ones. <laughs> Which, of course, it doesn't hold up to any level of scrutiny from a historical sense, considering that at this point, you can make very credible arguments as to the fact that the Soviet economy not only was pretty stagnant throughout pretty much its entire existence, but that the Soviet economy didn't even really recover from World War II, ever. <laughs> And that video is down in the description. It's by Tech. It's a much more in-depth. I suggest you go check that out as well. But that's sort of a problem for a lot of the narratives that get said around China. You see, the way people have drummed up a lot of fear on China, and I don't think the fear is entirely unwarranted, though I think the reasoning is kind of mad, is through the concerns of its economics. People say that, well, the, the Chinese economy is capitalist now, which I tackle in the last video, and I'll tackle again now because, well, they aren't. I mean, people will make the argument that, well, because they're more capitalist, their numbers are going to be more, uh, less susceptible to being manipulated, and they're going to be more accurate. But the fact of the matter is, China still has rampant price controls, to the point where just recently, back in May, uh, later of May, they saw that their uh, production goods uh, prices were increasing, and they increased the price controls on them. You see, the way China's price controls work generally is that they don't have price controls on everything. They aren't completely communist after all, but, and they aren't completely in the communist realm, but they will put price controls on when the price gets too high or it gets too low. The, sort of the same way that the U.S. does it. But it's still, the fact still remains their price controls are much, much more stringent than the U.S.'s is, especially since they're completely obsessed with having all of these goods that they can send out to foreign investors and make them look nice and try to get more people in. And I want... Uh, these, uh, these things are obvious once you look into it. Once you actually look into the Chinese economy beyond simply what the Chinese are saying directly and start looking at either individual incidents or into statistical data which doesn't congeal with the Chinese uh, opinion on the matter or even just look into their policies and what they're doing, it becomes obvious that the Chinese perception of the economy and the U.S.'s perception of the economy is complete nonsense. But why? is a complete nonsense. And why is this continuing again? Why is it that the same thing that happened in the 50s when people thought that the Soviet Union was going to the, be the end-all be-all of economies is happening again in 2021 with regard to China? Well, it's because of, an, of a certain economic concept that doesn't get covered enough. And that is what I at least like to call the fake market. Because, you see, in, China, in communist countries, you cannot have price mechanisms. They have price controls, they have inflation, they have all sorts of centrally planned government expen uh, government controls on the economy. This means you cannot know what their economy is. So anything that you see in terms of statistics about their economy coming directly from them are all going to be faked in one way or another because there is no way to have a lot of these statistics outside of direct uh, production uh, numbers, you know, like exact numbers of uh, tons of steel or uh, certain products and that sort of thing, you can't know what they're actually doing or what ha what's happening. And by the way, most of those are generally faked and double counted or undercounted as well. The production numbers are just as bad, but for different reasons. You can't know because they don't have the mechanisms to let you know. It's all a fake market. 
they don't have a free market. Their, their free market essentially boils down to do what we want or we won't, uh, or we won't let you operate. Which isn't a free market, it's just the government saying, well, we won't murder the bourgeoisie, we'll just take control of them through more informal means. Which, hey, is kind of similar to, I don't know, fascism or Nazism. Though I don't like the continued comparisons of the communists in China to the fascists in Italy or, in, uh, or Nazis in Germany, because I don't like that people use, uh, use that term specifically because most people who don't know anything about fascism will simply say, well, that means that the communists in China are right wing, which is, of course, stupid. But the actual comparison on an ideological level to the Italian fascists is fairly apt. They do a lot of the same things. It, it, it's, it, uh, fascism, of course, is just socialism, but instead of shooting the bourgeoisie, we say, do what we want or we'll shoot you, <laughs> uh, rather than shooting first and asking questions later, as in Bolshevism and in earlier communism in China. These are the sorts of things which happen when you start talking about uh, about China, I I do quite like talking about China as it is. They have a lot of very interesting things going on there, and not a lot of them, of course, being good. But it is interesting, and I think that's where I'm going to leave you guys off. If you enjoyed that video, do in fact subscribe down below. Check out my links to other places, whether it be my BitChute, my Odyssey, my Brighteon, my Rumble, or it be my Gabber Mines. All of those links are down in the description, along with breakingonthedaily.locals.com, where you can check out this video and all of my other videos. And that's where I'm going to leave you guys off. I'm Kel Kidman, this has been Breaking on the Daily, and I'm out.